and welcome to EMS Expo, EMS World Expo 2011 here in Las Vegas. We're in Las Vegas and I'm so happy to be here today. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about the show yet. This is a joint podcast between EMS Garage and the MedicCast. Joining me is Miss Ann, Caring Ann, and you all know her, so thanks for coming on and sure. thanks for being a part. Also joining us, Mr. Tom Boothley, and we have a special guest with Tom here in a minute, and we'll talk to her, and we're going to talk about the differences between nurses and paramedics, and we're going to talk about a cup. Yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, but we also like to thank our studio sponsor today. Um, it's the American College of Emergency Physicians. Man, I'm going to mess this up because I'm a little out of practice and it's really hot here. Um, so today, this episode is sponsored by Physio Control, and joining me is Mr. Paul Satterley. Hello, sir. Hello. Doctor, Doctor Paul Satterley. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so tell us a little bit about who you are, and then let's talk about mechanical CPR. Okay. So I'm an emergency physician. I work in an ER half my time. The other half my time, I'm a medical director for an ambulance service that takes care of about a million people in the state of Minnesota, wow. about 50,000 transports every year, and about over 300 cardiac arrests every year. Wow. So we have this great population to really start testing stuff, trying things out, seeing if it's helpful and beneficial. Have you, so did you, did you guys um, buy Lucas devices? Yeah, or? 2007. We, okay. the, the, I have a cohort, another medical director, who really, at that time, saw the benefit push the company to get them. Right. We've now got 36 in place, one on every ALS truck. Nice. And every every cardiac arrest gets the Lucas, except for maybe conditions like early ROSC or too big or too small. You know, okay. the, the typical things you'd expect. Right. And then, so have you guys, so you guys are using the air-powered ones. We I are assume. using the air-powered ones. Have you one, tried, yeah. have you guys tried to go to battery yet? We no? haven't. Primarily no. just because of a, a financial thing. Right. And oh, they, yeah, absolutely. Realistically, the air-powered ones have, have maintained just fine. And they've been... Yeah, really and, good performers. Right, and if we if we started replacing them, I'm sure we'd replace with the battery powered. Right. We haven't had to replace any yet. So. so what are some of the benefits of using mechanical CPR over, say, just you know, all of us yeah. trying to go around a guy yeah. for two minutes? The biggest one I can tell you, we operate in both an urban setting and a rural setting. In some of our rural settings, the first responder there is the sheriff, the one sheriff. Right. So we show up with our EMT and our paramedic and then you have the sheriff. And you you know, you just can't unless you're gonna employ family members to help out. That just doesn't work to, you know, in order to provide quality CPR in that setting. On the other side of it is when you have a lot of people roaming around, you may have more people that can do compressions, but I think with the mechanical compression, you're guaranteed to get consistent. What I want as medical director, exactly the, the compressions I want, consistently, right depth, right timing, no gaps, all that stuff. And, and I can't train, we have 80 first responder groups we work with. And for me to spend a bunch of time going to every one of those first responder groups to retrain and retrain and quality assure their CPR, is a huge drain on our time because you know we have 48,700 other calls that I have to check in on as well. You know what I mean in a year, so I can't just put all my time in cardiac arrest. Right. So, what is, what have you seen as far as your return to circulation? We what we see is, and I'll show it because I have some slides that I present later um, at a different forum. But what we see is that if we put Lucas on, we get a lot higher ROSC rate early. It tails off later. Right. But if we get it on early, compared to the non-lupus uses, we get this much higher ROSC rate. And there's, uh, there's a Swedish publication out there, a, a research article that says if you get ROSC early, those people have a much greater chance of surviving long term versus the ROSC at 30 minutes, you know, which I think, uh, to me, that just means you've, you've saved their brain and then you try to figure out, get their heart going again. Wow. What do you consider early? Just out of curiosity. For us, it's under uh, under 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're talking uh, after the first few cycles. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. You know, that makes we've, sense. we've got scenarios where you get ROSC again, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Those people notoriously don't do well, and I think it's just that brain has taken too much of an injury. Sure. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't. You know, right now it's really we don't have we have 600 uses of the Lucas. It's hard for us to compare non-use and use. The best thing probably would be is if we could go back and compare pre-implementation and post-implementation. But as everybody knows, since 2005, there's been so many changes in cardiac arrest, it's gonna be really hard to get compare apples to apples. So you're stuck. I think one of the most important developments uh, that has come out recently is the knowledge that minimizing the delay between stopping compressions and shocking yep. leads to a much higher yep. ROS rate as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm wondering, um, have you measured what your ROSC rate is prior to the application of the device? Because if, if it's waiting 15 minutes into, into the cardiac arrest, we would normally think that's a patient with a fairly poor prognosis. Right. Yeah, no, we haven't measured that. Part of that is um, is we're getting more comfortable with using the software to look at what our arrest has done using the monitor. 
Um, that's going to be the best way for us to measure that interval, and we're still working on trying to uh, sort through that. I like measure. that too. We, we have that technology in, in Hilton Head Island, and we haven't really started using it to uh, QI our cardiac arrests yet, but I saw Dana Yost's presentation yeah. in Baltimore oh. and was, was really psyched about it because I know just from being the uh, CARES registry yeah. site coordinator yeah. for my department, if you look at these cardiac arrests, you would think, well, we know we're supposed to be shocking every two minutes. We're not. No way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Without QIing it and, and looking to see, are you really following a two minute cycle? Yeah. And, and if you look at it on a graph, you would like to see a shock every two minutes right. if the patient's uh, in persistent VF. Yeah. You don't see that. No. The reality is you're going to see shock, 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 you know, five minutes of no shocks <laughs> and then another cluster of shots. Right. And, and some they're going to give a ventilation prior to the shot. That's bad. Mm -hmm. and, and so really without looking, um, the, and I, I, uh, I got a kick out of, I think it was Dana, I don't want to misattribute this, but I, I think he said, it's the disparity between what we remember having, oh, it was Houston, it was the guys in Houston, I was uh, the webcast from Houston where they used the same technology. It's basically saying, I don't know if that's what they would have liked to have happened, right. or if what they right. remembered <laughs> yeah. had happened on the right. call, yeah. but it's objective data, you can't argue it, it's like it's obvious yep. what happened and how long the yeah. delays were, and I think it's good. It, it holds a mirror up to your system and lets you know exactly how you're performing. Yep. And if you don't measure it, you can't improve it. So, Dr. Satterley, I know you have to run because you're going Thank to the you. Physio <laughs> University. <laughs> and if you want to hear more about this, they can go over there and Absolutely. hear yeah, your I'm presentation. And yeah. Yeah. Um, do you guys, is that online yet? Do they, do they put it, it on? Okay. I think it is. When I, I can find that resource and maybe we'll I think it'd be know, great. It out. So All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks for Dr. taking Satterley. me today. I appreciate it. Nice yeah. to meet you. Likewise. All right. Nice to meet you.